Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. You can ask successful reef keepers what they dose for SPS in terms of supplements, additives, and coral food, and chances are you will get many different answers. Some use amino acids while others may use a powder food like reef roids. Dosing trace elements is also a common practice. The point here is that there is no definitive answer. Many other variables are also in play. Lighting, flow, stability, and key parameters can all impact the growth and colors of SPS. So how important is it to add stuff to your tank to have a thriving collection of SPS? Let's answer this question by using my 187 gallon aquarium as a case study. It is overgrown with colorful SPS, yet I do not do a lot in terms of supplements, additives, and coral food for this tank. I do dose nitrates and phosphates when necessary to maintain my target levels for those elements. I shoot for nitrates in the 2.5 to 5.0 part per million range and phosphates between 0.03 and 0.07. Some fading can occur with my SPS if I go below those levels. I also dose Cato Grow from Brightwell Aquatics. I had been using Cato Grow to optimize Cato growth, but I recently took my Cato offline. However, I am still dosing it since it is a supplement that is a good source of iron and manganese for SPS. Anecdotal evidence suggests that iron can help bring out greens, while manganese helps with reds and pinks. Over the years, I have not used coral food and amino acids too often with my reef tanks. I did use frozen cyclopes and reef nutrition's oyster feast and roidy feast pretty consistently with my old 225 gallon tank, but I've used oyster feast sparingly with my 187 gallon tank. Today I tend to get cyano or some other type of undesirable algae like dinoflagellates when I dose too much coral food or aminos. As for fish food, I usually feed mices and brine shrimp cubes pellets as well as nori. My tanks need their veggies and just love nori. My goal is to feed the fish a lot of food. Typically there are four to five feedings per day. I also use my own coral and fish food. Ingredients include shrimp, scallops, nori, clams, mussels, silver sides, bloodworms, mices, and brine shrimp. Additionally, I will add in some Vitachem, spirulina powder, garlic, and some reef roids. Vitachem addresses nutritional deficiencies in marine fish and invertebrates. Garlic helps finicky fish eat, and the spirulina powder is supposed to be good for fish, corals, and invertebrates since it contains amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. So where does feeding SPS rank on my list of top 10 tips for keeping an SPS reef tank? It actually doesn't even make the cut. Personally, I have not noticed better color or growth with my corals after using aminos or coral food from a bottle. This has been the case for my 187 gallon tank as well as past tanks. My corals seem to do pretty well without that stuff. I think fish poop is beneficial for corals, one reason why I like to keep my fish fat and happy. But I'm also just one reef keeper. As mentioned previously, others have success using specific trace elements, supplements, and food for SPS. However, there is no silver bullet like coral food that will dictate success. Many other things factor into the equation. Well, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I also want to remind you about my premium SPS frag store on reefbum.com. I will leave a link in the video description below. I will also leave links from my equipment store. I do sell GHL, Royal Exclusive, Pax Mellum, and Reef Bright equipment, plus ice cap and max spec gyras, as well as Reef Octopus calcium and caulk reactors. Many of these products I do use personally on my tanks. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.